Welcome, and today we're going to be talking about finding PsycInfo on the Internet and doing a basic search. So the first thing is to log in to a VPN portal, our VPN portal. What you need to do to do this is go down to the computer help desk, which is at 2E03, and ask them for a VPN account. VPN stands for Virtual Private Network. And what that does is once you log into this at York, your computer, wherever you are, at home, at work, wherever, at Starbucks, is treated as if you're on campus. And that gives you certain security privileges. Now, those security privileges are going to become critically important when you move over to starting to look for articles. Because you have to go through all of these different security processes to get to the articles online. And it's much easier to use a VPN account. The other method, which I don't recommend at all because it doesn't work all the time, is using your library card and your library ID, your barcode, to log in. You can use that, but that doesn't work most of the time. And also, you have to go to the library to register that so you can use it. So I would rather, if you're just going to make one trip, go to the help desk. So you get your VPN account, go to the student uh, VPN logon page at York, and type in your username and your password. And then from that page, you need to get to the library's home page. You can do that however you want. You can go to the York home page, and you can, uh, you know, uh, or you could type into the address bar. Uh, york.cuny.edu uh, or whatever you'd like to do. The one thing though is you need to stay in the same window or tab that you opened up the VPN account in. And one way you can tell whether or not you're still in that tab is a little gold padlock will appear at the bottom of your screen uh, in your browser. And if you look down at the lower right hand side of my browser window, you can see a little gold padlock. And then what you're going to do is you're going to click on Articles, Statistics, and Images. Uh, this is the Research Tools page. And depending upon where you enter the library, you may have to actually go to the Research Tools. But oftentimes, when you uh, go to the library uh, page, you'll be taken to this page immediately. Then click Articles, Statistics, and Images. Then you'll click Articles. And then you'll be taken to the top of this page. And scroll down this page until you get to the P's. And then click the yellow box next to PsycInfo. OK, we're in PsycInfo now. And PsycInfo is a database of research articles in psychology. Uh, it's somehow monitored by the APA, the American Psychological Association. And it's a very, very valuable tool. And we're using it through EBSCOhost. And the first thing we need to do when we want to search PsycInfo is start out right and use the thesaurus. Notice in the upper right-hand corner, there's an upper left-hand corner. There's a link to the thesaurus. If you go click on that, that'll take you to the thesaurus. And here we are. Don't make the mistake I always do of typing something into that upper search box. That's the PsycInfo search. And it will just bypass the thesaurus. Notice it says browsing PsycInfo thesaurus. Well, type in the term you want to use uh, for your search uh, in that box. Notice I'm going to search for PTSD. Uh, let's say you want to do a paper on post-traumatic stress disorder. So let's click Browse. And notice it says PTSD use post-traumatic stress disorder. That's the official APA subject term for PTSD. Notice there's no hyphen between post and traumatic, and it's one word. That's the term that PsycInfo will recognize. And as we move on in using PsycInfo, you'll see how that works. And if you actually click uh, the post-traumatic stress disorder link on that last page, it'll expand uh, the uh, listing. It'll tell you information about when the term was introduced, what its uh, scope is, and also it'll give you broader terms, if there are any, related terms, or narrower terms. 
Okay, now we're going to go back to a new search, and next to the Thesaurus link, and I'm glad I don't have to say that again, uh, next to the Thesaurus link is a new search link, so click that and it'll take you to the new search. Type in post-traumatic stress disorder as it was written in the Thesaurus. Oh, I had to say Thesaurus again. Oh, I just said it again! And notice I put quotation marks around it. That will allow the computer to recognize this as one single phrase, which is important. And then just go ahead and click the search button. And here we are with the list of hits or results. We have 15,759 articles or books with the term post-traumatic stress disorder somewhere in its searchable text. Uh, what the searchable text is depends on the article and the journal it was published in. Sometimes the searchable text is only the title. Other times it's the title, the author's information, uh, and the abstract. And then in a few cases it's all of that and all the text in the article. So it really depends. But 15,000 articles, wow, that's a lot. Uh, let's go ahead and click on, or let's like, take a look at that first hit, Monsters in My Head, I like that title. Uh, it tells us the title of the article, the author's name, where it was published, and also notice it's telling us that it's in PDF full text. That means that if we click on that link, we will be taken to a full text article online of that research article. Uh, we're not going to do that just yet. I would like you to click on the title, which will take us to the abstract. And here we are at the abstract page. Notice up on top we have the PDF uh, full text link again. Uh, we have another link that says cited references. That means that there are 52 references in the reference list of this article. And if we click that link, we will go to a list of those references. Uh, across the page, there's an icon to print, to mail the abstract to you, to save the abstract to your uh, you know, computer, and other icons which I don't use and so I don't know that much about. You can certainly play around with them and figure out how to use them. So we have the title, we have the author information, and we have the address and the source, that is the article. Uh, much of that you won't ever use. You'll have to have the author information and the source, but that's about all. One thing that usually is there and is not is the DOI information. And in doing an APA reference, uh, and if you cite it from the internet, as if you do if you download that PDF text, you should have the DOI number, uh, and you'll have to look up what to do if you don't have the DOI number. Uh, in uh, one of the APA online guides, uh, but that's the information that you'll normally use. Uh, the other thing I'd like to point out on this top part of the abstract page are the keywords. Keywords are terms that the author provided that they believe sums up or are keywords uh, for a search in searching for their article. So those are the author's terms, the author-generated terms that they think is important. Now let's move down to the second part of the abstract page. And here's why we call it the abstract page, because here's the abstract. Reading the abstract can give you a good overview of the article. And then we have subject terms. Subject terms are the official APA psych info uh, you know, terms from the thesaurus uh, that have been used to classify this article. Notice that they're hyperlinked, so if we would click those, it would take us to a search of that term. Uh, then there's other information that's moderately useful. Uh, the one thing that's really useful to us is publication type. Notice it says peer-reviewed article. That tells you if this is a peer-reviewed article. And nothing else here on this page will uh, give you information about whether or not this article is a research article or not. Sometimes you will see something that says empirical, and you will see something that says original journal article. Students often say, oh, so that means it's empirical and it's primary. No, no it's not. You can only trust uh, the publication type as if it's peer-reviewed or not on the abstract page. Uh, to find out if it's an empirical article or if it's primary, you probably have to read the article itself. 
So that's the abstract page.